Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a physics problem uh, that involves um, some basic calculus. So we have a particle uh, that moves along a line with velocity in feet per second. V is equal to t squared minus t. The total distance in feet traveled from t equals 0 to t equal 2 equals one of the following. So we It'd be easiest just to identify what are we actually solving for. We're solving for x, and x is the total distance in feet traveled. And uh, how can we relate this to velocity? Well, velocity is, of course, equal to the change in distance over the change in time. So we can rewrite our equation as dx dt is equal to t squared minus t. And then we can do separation of variables, and then we have dx is equal to quantity of t squared minus t dt and then we just need to integrate both sides and when we do that we finally get x by itself which is what we're solving for. So the trap that you can fall into here is you can say well I'm integrating from 0 to 2 and we can make our limits of integration 0 to 2 but then that would actually produce the wrong answer and the reason is uh, if we look at this graph and what I'll do is I'll plot it out over here. If we look at the graph of the function, so our t-axis is actually our x-axis, and our v is actually our y-axis. And if we were to take this equation and factor out the t, we would get v is equal to t times the quantity of t minus 1. And then we set v equals 0 because uh, we're looking for our roots or our x-intercepts or in this case our t-intercepts. So if we do that, we have t times t minus 1 is equal to 0. And then our two solutions, our t is equal to 0, and then t is equal to 1. So if we plot that out, our two roots for the equation are 0, and I'll put the, I'll put, actually I'll put the 1 right here. So, so if we, now this quadratic is obviously positive so we know it's going to be a parabola going upwards so it's going to look something like this and then we will make this two and if we look at this area here this area is negative and then if we look at this area here I kind of ran out of space but you get the idea this area here is positive. So if we integrate from 0 to 2, we're going to get the net, net area, which is going to have this positive area subtracted by this smaller negative area, which is actually the wrong answer because they're looking for the total distance, not the position. If they're asking for the position from 0 to 2, then we would use this because then you would say, well, let's say we're starting at zero and you go some negative distance and then you start going, at this point, you start going positive distance and then that would get your position, your position, but we're looking for the total distance traveled, total distance traveled. So what we need to do is we need to separate these two areas when we integrate. So we have this one going from zero to one, t squared minus t dt and we want the absolute value of that so let's do the absolute value and then we're going to add that to the integral from 1 to 2 of t squared minus t dt so when we do this the integration is just involves increasing the power by 1 and multiplying by the reciprocal so we would get 1 third t cubed minus one half t squared and this is going from zero to one but again this is the absolute value and then we're going to be adding same thing here so this is just one third t cubed minus one half t squared and then this time we're going from one to two so when we do this and we plug in the one here we just get uh, one third minus one half times one squared is just one half. And then again, this is going to be the absolute value because we expect this value to be negative. And then we add one third times two cubed, which is just eight, 
and then we have minus 1 half times t squared, so that's just 1 half times 4. And then we have this whole quantity subtracted by using this number 1, so we have 1 third times 1 minus 1 half times 1 squared. So what is 1 third uh, minus 1 half? I'll just do that over here. So it's just basic uh, arithmetic. So 1 third minus 1 half, and then this is, we'll mu multiply this by 2 over 2, and we'll multiply this by 3 over 3, so they have a lowest common denominator of 6. And then this is just equal to 2 sixth minus 3 sixth, which is equal to negative 1 sixth. So it's negative as we expected. So we have the absolute value of negative 1 sixth plus 8 thirds minus 2, minus 2. And then this is minus negative 1 sixth. So when we add this together, what do we get? Well, let's combine positive 1 6, and this becomes positive, positive 1 6. So that ends up being 2 6. So this is 2 6. And then plus 8 thirds. And why don't we just make this into um, 16 6. So they have the lowest common denominator. And then minus 2. So then we have 2 plus 16, which is which is 18, and 18 divided by 6 is 3, so you just get 3 minus 2, that's equal to 1, so our answer is D.